So today in biology we are going to proceed about the excretion and we are going to look at kidney failure. So the kidney can stop functioning due to these reasons. So, so this can be due to high or low blood pressure and the other reason can be due to intake of drugs and alcohol and the other reason is due to the parasite called uh, bihazia. The parasite called uh, bihazia. So these can cause kidney failure. And uh, there are two solutions that you can solve kidney failure. And this is a kidney machine and a kidney transplant. So when a kidney stops functioning, that means that toxic waste product, they won't be able to be removed by the body and due to this, this means that a person can die due to the build-up of toxic uh, substances. But this means that you'll be producing urine, but the urine that you'll be producing, there won't be a urea. Urea, urea will just remain in the body. So I've said that there are two solutions uh, that you can use uh, for kidney failure. It's either you have uh, the kidney machine or you have a kidney transplant. So the first thing that we're going to talk about is the kidney machine. So the kidney machine is also referred to as the rhino, uh, the rhino uh, diuresis machine, uh, the rhino diuresis machine or the diuresis machine. So the kidney machine is also referred to as the diuresis machine. So we are going to look at the process of the kidney machine, the processes that occurs. So as you can see, this is the arm and we have the machine here. So as blood comes through this uh, blood vessel, which is the artery, it's going to be transported into the kidney machine. Then we have the pump here. So the pump pushes the blood into the kidney machine. Then the kidney machine is made up of selectively permeable tubes. So these tubes, as you can see, they are selectively permeable. Then uh, some of the things that you're supposed to know is that the diuresis fluid here, the diuresis fluid, it does not contain urea. And due to the absence of urea, as blood flows through the tube, urea is going to go out of the tube into the diuresis machine and from the diuresis machine it's going to go out of the machine. Then the diuresis fluid also contains useful substances that are contained in blood. So this means that those useful substances cannot diffuse from the blood into the diuresis fluid. Then the other reason, uh, the other question that is asked in most uh, of the past papers, you'll be asked why this tube inside is cold. And the reason why it is cold is because, uh, it's, it's because the blood needs to slow down. So as the blood slows down here, that means that most of the urea is going to diffuse out of the blood into the diuresis machine. So the things that you are going to find in here, you are going to find essential, essential salts and water. You are also going to find glucose. So this means these, uh, these substances that cannot diffuse from the tube into the diuresis machine. And after the uh, after urea has diffused into the diuresis fluid, the blood will pass through this tube, it will go back into the veins, and from the veins it will be taken back to the heart. Let us now look at the kidney transplant. So what is the kidney transplant? 
So the kidney transplant is where a kidney is removed from the donor and is given to the recipient. So this is the surgical removal of this is the surgical removal of a health kidney from the donor to the recipient. And before uh, ki uh, and before the and before kidney transplant, the thing that uh, the doctors they do they match the blood groups in the tissues. So this means the blood groups and the tissues have to be the same. But in the case where the blood groups and the tissues are not the same, the recipient uh, immune system is going to attack the kidney of the donor. And when the kidney of the donor is attacked, that means that the kidney is going to be destroyed. But uh, that can be prevented by matching the blood groups in the tissues. Let us now look at the advantages and disadvantages of both the kidney machine and the kidney transplant. So we are going to start with the advantages advantages of the kidney machine. So one of the advantages of the kidney machine is that here there is no risk of death. So there is no risk of death. Risk of death. Then the other advantage of this is that a person does not need surgery. So you don't need uh, surgery. Surgery is not uh, involved. That's the other advantage. Let us now look at some of the disadvantages. One of the disadvantages is that a person that is using a kidney machine will spend a lot of hours. They spend about eight hours uh, in a week. So they spend uh, a lot of hours on the machine, a lot of hours is spent on the machine. On the machine. Then the other disadvantage is that here the diet has to be controlled. So that has to be controlled. Then the other disadvantage is that it's uh, expensive. Let us look at the advantages of so advantages of kidney transplant. So one of the advantages is that here the dirty does not need to be controlled. So dirty does not need to be controlled. The other advantage is that uh, when there is a successful kidney transplant, that kidney can work as a normal kidney. So that can lead to working as a normal kidney. Let us look at the disadvantages. The disadvantages is that here the drugs that are used to complement the kidney transplant they are expensive. So drugs, there is a need of drugs. Then the other disadvantage is that a person here can die during surgery. The other disadvantage is that the lack of donors. The lack of donors. Lack of donors. Uh, so the next thing that we're going to talk about 
is the excretion in the uh, skin and the excretion in the lungs. So the excretion in the lungs involves the removal of carbon dioxide. And if carbon dioxide is left to accumulate in blood, it's going to react with water to form uh, carbonic acid. And that carbonic acid is going to change the pH of cells. So that means carbon dioxide has to be removed. Let us look at excretion in the skin. So excretion in the skin involves the removal of water and uh, small molecules of urea and salts. So uh, when, the, when the temperature of blood increases, that means that the, uh, the blood vessels that supply blood to the sweat glands, they are going to increase in size. And when they increase in size, that means a lot of sweat is going to be produced. And uh, when a lot of sweat is going to produce, uh, when a lot of sweat is going to produce, that means urea, salt, and water is going to be removed from the body. Uh, let us take into uh, another situation where the, uh, the temperature of blood is reduced. So when the temperature of blood is low, that means that the amount of uh, blood that will be passing through the blood vessels that supply the sweat glands uh, or, uh, is, is not going to be uh, increased in size. And uh, due to this less amount of salts, urea and water will be removed through the, uh, the skin. Then the other thing that you're supposed to know about uh, excretion in the skin is that when, uh, when it's very hot, when it's very hot, that means that a lot of sweat is produced. 